In this episode of the On.Net Show, my buddy Cam is going to talk to us about how you could talk to your smoker and cook perfect ribs. Hey everyone, my name is Cecil Phillip and in this episode of the On.Net Show, Cam is coming back to talk to us about some of the crazy IoT things that you've been working on, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so tell me, what is it that you're going to show us right now? Like, I see a picture of a, a smoker. Mm -hmm. So I live in Kansas City, Missouri. Okay. And if, uh, if most people know anything about Kansas City, they know that it's the home of some outstanding barbecue. I've had Kansas City barbecue, and it is pretty good. Well, uh, I was in Costco uh, last spring, mm -hmm. and um, uh, the, one of their traveling salespeople caught me and convinced me to buy this smoker right here. Okay. And, um, and I was excited because, you know, like all Kansas Cityans, I love my barbecue. But I got home, and as I started cooking things with it, I realized that, you know, the temperature control just wasn't what I wanted it to be. It's kind of a small smoker. Yeah. And it had just a thermostat on it to drive the feed of the wood pellets into the fire. And because it's so small, once the fire starts building, it takes a while for, for the, the temperature probe and the thermostat to get it all figured out. Yeah. And a lot of times it overshoots the mark. Got it. So, like, for example, if you're smoking ribs, the temperature that you want to cook ribs at is 225 Fahrenheit. Mm. But I had a real hard time keeping my smoker right at 225. It would tend to overshoot that mark and go all the way up to 275 or 300. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd end up with dry ribs. Yeah. It turns out the solution to this problem is something called a PID controller. Uh, proportional Integral Derivative. Okay. Now, I, I don't have a background in calculus or anything like that, so this was all a new concept to me. Yeah. Uh, but I, I started doing some research, and I realized that I needed to build a PID controller for my... Uh, for your smoker. For my smoker. Okay. Uh, so the, ch the tools I chose to do this mm. uh, were Raspberry Pi and .NET Core. All right, cool. And so what you're showing us here is some pictures of mm -hmm. like how you went through that process of you creating that PID controller, right? Right. So there was, a, there was a research and development phase where I was doing a lot of prototypes on, yep. on breadboards. You can see here on the pictures. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the first challenge that I had to figure out was the heat probe in the smoker is a, is a particular type of temperature sensor called an RTD, resistive okay. temperature detector. Okay. And I had no idea how to go about reading an RTD in .NET Core. So there was a lot of, a lot of research I had to do in, sure. in figuring that out. Um, yeah. So as you can see here in the pictures, I ended up building, uh, I, uh, the prototype eventually was successful, and I, I built a permanent uh, breadboard uh, that it, it now exists in the smokers. I scroll down here, you can see the project box where I, where I keep the, all the, <laughs> it's just a big wad of wires and a Raspberry Pi and, and some, uh, some relays to control the, the auger and the blower and the, uh, the, the starter in the smoker. So I guess one of the questions some folks might ask is, you just have this wad of wires next to a lot of heat. Mm -hmm. Right, like, is that safe? Well, it's, it's isolated a little bit. Here in this image, you can see, um, in this image, you can see the underneath the smoker in that there's my project box where I've just kind of strapped it to the bottom of the smoker. Yeah. So the you know, heat rises, and sure. it does get a little warm in that project box, but it's certainly not enough to, to damage any of the electronics. OK, great, great, great. So why don't we take a look at the, this table? Cause it, like, you don't have the smoker here, but you do have some of the equipment that you use to kind of put that project together. Mm -hmm. So why don't, we, why don't we talk about what we have here on the table? Okay, so um, I'll start right over here with this the Raspberry Pi. This is a yep. Raspberry Pi 3B, I believe. Okay. Um, the current model is the 4. I just haven't done anything with it yet. Yeah. Um, this is a, another um, circuit just like the one that I designed and tested and, and lives, in my, lives in my smoker now. Sure. Uh, the whole point of this circuit is to control this little chip right here. It's called an analog to digital converter. This particular one yeah. is um, called an MCP3008. Okay. And it just so happens that in the .NET Core uh, IoT bindings project, there is support built in for an MCP3008. Oh, great. And so that's all, all on GitHub, too, so folks could just like pull it down, mm -hmm. install a new Git package if they wanted to. Correct. Cool. So the whole point of this circuit is to read temperatures from this probe. This is the exact same type of probe that is in my smoker. Okay. And I've built a little demo application so we can show this in real time. 
All right. I have a heat source right here. Are you? What, do you, what is that? What it's, are you just, it's just a cigarette lighter. You're not going to light the studio on fire. Are you? I'm not going to light the studio on fire. Okay. I'm just going to create some. Because we don't have insurance for that. I, the, fair. And, and I, I, I did decide against my blowtorch that I usually use. A blowtorch. Yeah. I just settled on a cigarette lighter this time. I, I appreciate it. Thank you're, you. You're welcome. <laughs> so um, the way that the way that the code works for this is I'm actually sampling values, um, resistance values. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the the, the way this circuit works is it passes electricity through this probe yeah. and the probe, the, the resistance of the probe varies based on how much heat it's experiencing. Sure. And there's some math and some formulas to put it through and you, you know, I'm not going to go into all that because to be perfectly honest, I don't have a complete grasp over it. I kind of built on, on the work of others there. Sure, fair enough. But uh, the, the long and short of it is that analog to digital converter is sampling this guy about 100 times a second yeah. to figure out an average of what the current temperature is. And then I do some more math to convert it to Fahrenheit because I'm doing all the math in, in metrics. Sure. So just as an example, we'll... So you're going to light this up? We're going to apply a little heat to it right now. And then as you're applying the heat, so you're starting right now around like 70, 72 degrees. Mm -hmm. And then now, like looking at your screen, it's, it's going up, it's past 80, it's past 90. Mm -hmm. like, so we're over 100 degrees now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm guessing there's like a slight delay, probably like a second or two delay. There's a few seconds, yeah. Which is fine, okay. Well, and, and the metal is still is still gonna be hot. Yeah. So it's you're gonna see the temp, now that I've stopped with the fire, you're gonna see the temperature keep going up. Okay, right. So you're not lighting it anymore, but you know, because of that delay, like it's still going up. And mm -hmm. so I'm sure this particular um, device could go up to like hundreds and hundreds of degrees, right? RT because it's made to be in that really mm -hmm. hot environment. So this, this type of probe, uh, this type of RTD probe, resistive temperature detector probe, mm -hmm. is designed for industrial applications. Kay. So things like grills or kilns or, you know, other types of industrial fires and processes and so forth. Okay, cool. So now, you know, luckily we have this handy dandy cup of ice <laughs> that's going to hopefully cool it down. Mm -hmm. um, but just like we saw with the lighter, like when it went up now, like we're going to see as the temperature drops back down to, to like a nice safe thing to have on the table. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So tell me about the code that enables all of this now. So um, it's all .NET Core. Yeah. So one of the great, my favorite thing actually about .NET Core is that it's multi-platform, multi-architecture. Sure. You can run it on Windows, you can run it in a Linux container, you can run it yeah. in you know, Raspberry Pi. Right. Um, so I have uh, Raspberry Pi devices all over my house doing little tasks, and okay. um, this is this is one of them. I've built the the smoker logic actually exists as a web API. Okay. Uh, it's all self-contained in a web API, and I was I was initially controlling it through think, tools like Curl and Postman. Um, sure, 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 sure. Then I built myself a command line tool, but that required SSHing into the device. Uh, None of these scenarios worked with the wife, though. No, she didn't want to like SSH into like a Linux machine. <laughs> she, and do she's not. She's not a. She wasn't feeling uh, it. No, no, no. no. Ah, well. So uh, to increase the the wife acceptance factor, I had to come yeah. up with another UI. That should be like an official metric, like the it, wife it, acceptance it, it factor. It is, it is. Well, I, I think I borrowed the term from Scott Hanselman. I, I, I think he, he was the one who coined it, maybe. Nice. That's awesome. Um, anyway, so I had to come up with a different, uni, uh, different user interface for the wife. And yeah. I mean, the, the obvious solution would be like a web app or maybe a Blazor app. Sure. Um, I decided to not go with the obvious, though. I built a Skype bot. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so does that mean that... You could talk to your smoker? Yep, in fact, uh, very much so, yep. So uh, here on the screen, I have uh, Skype brought up, and um, you can see previous conversations I've had with it. Uh, sure. Like, for example, you, t you can see where I've said hold, and it says what temperature, and I say, okay, 220. I was probably cooking ribs that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. Or like in real time, I can I can request the status. Um, of course, the status at home in Kansas City is it's 34 degrees on my back porch. So <laughs> sure, 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 sure. right, 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 right. Okay. So essentially, what you're doing now is you you created this bot. I'm guessing you use something like Bot Framework or mm -hmm. something like that. Yep. And now you've installed it into Skype. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, can anybody install this, or is this like? A personal thing. Like, can so, anybody just install and talk to your smoker? And, uh, so it is locked down to my um, Azure Active Directory tenant. Okay. So if, if you're not a, m a member of that, you can't get into my smoker. Okay. Which, that's uh, good. Well, that's important. <laughs> yeah. Do you know anybody just cooking ran ribs randomly in your back porch? No, that would be bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, how does the bot interact with the Raspberry Pi? So the bot lives. Um, it's it's like you said. It's a Microsoft Bot Framework bot, mm -hmm. um, which actually the the um, 
Microsoft Bot Framework, I don't think actually supports Skype anymore. I think they 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 actually um, deprecated that. I actually got in just under the wire right oh, before yeah. they did that. Yeah. Um, but the when I send a command, when I send when I interact with with uh, Skype here and it does its thing through the Microsoft Bot Framework, the web app that drives that Skype bot is actually hitting an endpoint that I've created using uh, Azure Service Bus Hybrid Relay. Okay. And that hybrid relay relays the uh, the RESTful commands to the smoker itself at home. That's interesting. And so for folks that might not be familiar, so Azure Service Bus Relay, like you said, you have an API, but this is running at home mm -hmm. in your house. Behind my firewall. Behind your firewall. And essentially, Relay kind of allows you to you know, take that communication outside mm -hmm. securely, right? And so now you could talk to Service Bus, which will talk to your API, and you don't have to worry about like, exposing your, your Raspberry Pi to like the world. Right, exactly. Okay, awesome, awesome. So now we have the bot, and then you could just say, set the temperature, turn on the smoker. Like you have, I'm guessing, like a set of commands that you can mm -hmm. issue, and then now it'll just kind of talk to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and I'm really, so the, the command set is really small. You can see on, on, on my Skype window here that right now it only supports smoke, which is just make a lot of smoke, not really heat. Yeah. Uh, hold, which is set a, you know, a set point and maintain that set point using the PID algorithm I mentioned earlier. Sure. Um, status and, and shutdown, which I think are both obvious. I, it's, I'm really just getting started here. I have a whole list of things that I want to do, uh, things like notifications. For example, if sure. the fire goes out. Right, I want to know that the fire's gone out, that I need to go out there and, and rescue my food. Sure, 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 that's important. Or uh, no, another uh, example that I'd like to, uh, that I'd like to implement at some point um, would be notifications when the food's done. I have a temperature probe that works very similar to this probe sure. uh, that's meant to you know, jam in your meat. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to set up some kind of a notification system where it you know, rings me on my phone or on sure. Skype. Like a or timer or something mm -hmm. like that. Like, hey, cook this meat for five hours or six hours and hit me up when it's done. Or, it was, well, and time, so <laughs> when it comes to barbecuing, time is actually not the, the, the metric you want to use. You want to go by temperature. Okay, but so, is it temperature over a period of time, or mm -hmm. is it just well? Time? The temperature of the meat is what you're going for. Okay, got right. It. So like like if you're if you're talking uh, if like a medium rare steak is going to be 145 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, and you don't want to go above that, or you're going to start getting into medium or well. Got it. Okay, cool. This is this is super interesting. So you have some .NET code. Uh, you showed us the devices that it's interacting with. It's reading the temperature, and there's some math that's happening to convert that. Mm -hmm. and, and now you have this cool Skype bot that's there, so you could talk to your smoker, which I, I think is insane. Uh, this is really interesting. Do you have this code available somewhere that folks could take a look at it? I certainly do. Um, let me go out here to GitHub. Here is the GitHub repository. Okay. All this code is public. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really have instructions on how to implement it, but I did like write like a description of what every project does, sure. and all of my schematics for these you know these circuits that I've built. That's all available. You can hopefully there's enough information there that if you wanted to recreate this at home, you could. But I'm always yeah, yeah, happy yeah. to answer questions. Yeah, that's great. And then folks have any comments or anything like that that they can always submit like a GitHub issue or something like that, mm -hmm. or they could reach out to you on social media somewhere. All of the above. Awesome. Well, that's that's great, man. This is this is this is super cool, man. Thank you for coming on and sharing this with us. Thank you for having me. And thank you all for watching. And this has been another episode of the On.Net Show. We'll make sure that all of the links and project notes and stuff like that are inside of the show notes, so you can check it out and you could talk to your smoker too if you want. <laughs>